What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Seeds of Change. I'm your host, Matt Mills. I hope whenever you're listening to this, you're having a great day. I thank you uh, once again for your support. I do want to apologize because I know it is a day late. Um, I got caught up with a few things, and I do apologize for that. But without further ado, I do appreciate your time and your listening and the comments and the likes. And you sharing it, I appreciate all of it. Um, I appreciate you sharing this as I continue to share with you. So, without further ado, we're going to get into we're going to get into a few family announcements. Uh, the first one is in reference to tomorrow, and just you know, if you do have some free time tomorrow, please check out one, if not all, of these events tomorrow in the community. Bring your family, invite your friends. Just allow us to get out in the community and just have a good time during the summer. The first one is by Partners in Christ Ministries. It's the Community Outreach Day. It's tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at McPherson Park at East Street and Kensington Avenue in Philadelphia. They are accepting donations, so gently use clothes, travel size toiletries, or if you're willing to volunteer, please come out and support. Uh, Reverend Gwen Farrell is the leader and coordinator of this event. And I will have the flyer up, but just to say it out loud, the email address to contact is PICMinistries54 at gmail.com. And the number is 484-441-3066 if you do have any questions or you do want to reach out. Once again, this community outreach uh, is tomorrow at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So please, if you do have anything to give or contribute or volunteer... Please show your support. Um, I know I do plan on stopping by all three of these events tomorrow. So, you know, if you do have the time or you can find the time, please do support. Now, second up, we do have a community day tomorrow also, but from 12 to 4. So if you plan it right, you can go from the 10 to 12 to the 12 to 4. It's at Greater St. Paul United Holy Church. 3826 Haverford Avenue, where Elder Holmes is the pastor. Uh, if you do need contact information, it is documented, but just just go out to support. There will be music, food, fun, refreshments, vendors, giveaways, and health screenings. So if you don't have anything planned and you have your family with you, feel free to go by there right after the other event. Just... You know, go straight from north to west and hopefully have a good time. Usually it's a good time. And also we have one more thing to announce that's going on tomorrow. It's the Morton Summer Jam 2022. The Morton Parks and Recreation. And they have a few other uh, promoters. It's the first annual. They're going to have groups tomorrow. It's going to be entertainment. It's a fundraiser campaign to restore William Jacobs Park. So if you are a member of that community, if you live out here in the county, in Delaware County, even if you don't, it still could be a good experience. Once again, the time is 12 to 7, so if you plan it right, like I will or my parents will, possibly you can hit all three. Probably get yourself some good food throughout the day and just have a good time communicating and fellowshipping with one another and also just trying to support activities in our communities uh we'll also have this information posted but it should be a good time so if you find yourself able to at least go to one of them if not all of them please go and support these things that are going on in the community and there will be some other things going on next month. I know August 20th, there's a community picnic that we definitely will announce going forward, especially, you know, once we hit the month of August next week officially. And we also have something going, I believe, the end of the month, too. So you'll hear more about those things. But for right now, remember the three things we talked about that's going on tomorrow, the community outreach, the community day and the Morton Summer Jam. So. If you got some free time with your family, make sure you stop by and support these activities. Kind of want to pick up where I touched or left off last week. Um, And before I read the scripture, I do have to thank my mom. I have this Bible called the Battlefield of the Mind Study Bible. And I would recommend the book, The Battlefield of the Mind 
Uh, it's definitely a, a good read, and it's definitely a book that will help you become more conscious of the of your thoughts and how you're often under attack by your thoughts, and how how the simplest negative thought or the things you encounter. A lot of it is based off of your perception. And I think this book brings a lot of attention to your perception and your thought and your mindset on things and how you changing it can transform the life you experience. So it is The Better Foot of the Mind by Joyce Myers. But as we continue, I, I want to still deal with Philippians 4. And using this Bible, I do want to read and touch on. We did talk about uh, Paul's contentment last week a little bit in connection to Philippians 4.13. But I, I want to read it again in a different translation and talk more about the contentment piece. So, Philippians 4.11 says, Not that I speak from any personal need, for I have learned to be content and self-sufficient through Christ. Satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or uneasy, regardless of my circumstances. And this scripture, the older I get, um, I actually never really read it until I got a little older. And once I was older and read it, it, it was very helpful. And I think in my most recent journey of self-discovery and self-transparency... I think this scripture is very important. And the big thing, and, and I just, when I read the translation, I thought about not only his contentment, but his self-sufficiency through Christ. And what I think about is the fact that he, he means he, he depends on Christ to be content with himself. And sometimes we limit the word content but when we look at the word self-sufficient, it is it's the base of him not depending on anything outside of Christ and himself. And also he is not influenced by the things that are happening around him as far as who he is. And the reason that's important, because like I said, we all have a busy life. We all have things that we face. We all have our ups and downs. We all have our easy days. We all have our hard days. You know, we, we all have our days when things are going well financially and then out of nowhere, you got to get a new car or it has to go in the shop or you have to repave the driveway, get a tree cut because it's about to fall. We all have just unexpected things that can happen. And I think those things often have more power over us than they should. I say this as a person that I think most people have this issue also, is that we can define ourselves good or bad based on the things that we have or the things that we accomplish. And that's that's what I think most people do. That's nothing out of the ordinary. That's It's nothing, you know, wrong with it. But it's not the most healthy. Because when things go wrong, you can quickly lose your sense of self. You can quickly lose your grip on life. So we think about this, this contentment, this self-sufficiency. Because when, when Paul says contentment and then goes on to say it doesn't matter... If he's up or down, he knows how to get along when he has when he's up and has things. He knows how to get along when he's down and is missing things. And I think the, the importance of that transition is he's comfortable with who he is. He did not use his accomplishments or his writing or his ministry to completely define who he is. Through Christ... He found that self-sufficiency that he's not looking for other people to validate him. He's not looking for other uh, established entities to validate him. He's saying the Christ that made him, the Christ that converted him, the Christ that gave him purpose, knows who he is. And he's okay with that person. 
I think many times, depending on our circumstance, we're influenced. And oftentimes, negatively, we view ourselves because of these circumstances. We can struggle with moving forward and being positive because we are influenced by the ex- these external circumstances. So, the self-sufficiency is great. And you can't do this without Christ. But the other part of him mentioning self that I think we have to acknowledge is to be self-sufficient, you have to be completely honest with yourself. You cannot be, you can't not be disturbed regardless of your circumstance if you're not okay with who you are as a person. And I, and I don't mean some of the things about you. You need to learn who you are. You need to learn about your habits, your likes, your dislikes, your weaknesses, your strengths, your dreams. You need to encompass all of who you are to fully embrace the idea of being self-sufficient. Because if you're not honest about who you are, you will always be looking to someone to validate you will always be looking for someone's approval, some entity's approval, something something external to say you're okay or say that you're good. Mark Twain has a great quote where he says, Courage is a resistance to fear. Mastery of fear, but not the absence of fear. I think the truth is a lot of us are afraid of who we are. It is great to bask in our accomplishments and see how far we have come. But it's hard sometimes to be honest about who we are. And I think we have to, we owe it to ourselves and we owe it to God to take time to figure out who we are as people. Because there is no, you know, there's no verse 13 If you don't get through verse 11, there is no, I can do all things through Christ. If you don't fully embrace being content with who you are and embrace the self-sufficiency, you can't embrace that self-sufficiency. If you're living in fear of who you are, you know, let's cut through the red tape. If you're overly prideful and your pride Most of the time, if not all the time, is deeply rooted in insecurity. You're not ready to be self-sufficient. I'm sorry. And and I'm sure everybody has prideful moments. And there are some people that's okay with living in their pride. But if you are, if you're not willing to take your pride out of it. Because that's something I had to do. To acknowledge that there's something you don't have or you're not good at or that you don't know. Because many of us won't be that vulnerable because we don't want to show weakness. If you're willing to tear down your pride just, you know, just just to really get to the meat and potatoes of who you are, God can then use you. He doesn't need the person that thinks he knows it all. He doesn't need the person that's so situational that he's willing to do the work when he's good, but shuts down when he's bad. He needs the person that's willing to embrace all of himself, being honest about all of himself. Whether he's up or he's down, he's learned how to be okay with all of it. He needs that person. He doesn't need the person that's willing to walk away from it all when he's down. He needs a person to be so vulnerable that he's able to embrace the fact that Christ is in control. That Christ is the one that can help you persevere despite your weaknesses and insecurities. And that's what this self-sufficiency is talking about. He's self-sufficient in the sense of he not only understands who he is. He likes who he is. He's okay with who he is. He embraces who he is. And through Christ, he doesn't need anyone else to make it through. Because the self-sufficient through Christ 
is the precursor to doing all things to Christ who strengthened him. He intentionally said the same thing twice. He touched on it in verse 11, explained to you in verse 12 how he's living, whether up or down, and then reinforces it in verse 13. So when we look at the whole, that, that picture he's trying to paint, I need Christ in my life. But I need to be okay with me. I need to be okay to know I am who I am regardless of what I'm dealing with. I am the one that Christ created regardless of my situation. I am willing to learn about the creation so that I can grow in love even further with the creator. Because Philippians 4.13 becomes even more powerful the more you learn about yourself. And I think the reason I wanted to share that is because that's where I am. I'm consistently trying to embrace me. What my tics are, what upsets me, what gets me anxious, what frustrates me, what irritates me, what makes me happy, what makes me smile, what keeps me hopeful. I'm consistently trying to learn these things. And when they arise, I'd make a note. Because I'm consistently trying to grow. But in that process, I'm learning to know I'm okay. I'm good. And I like who I am. I'm learning to like who I am. because, Because God loved who I am. And loves who I am. God didn't make any mistakes when he made me or when he made you. So you owe it to yourself to learn to like who you are. You owe it to yourself to learn to know who you are. So that you could truly see what being self-sufficient and content is. So dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for creating this time and this space that we can just take a moment to think on you and get closer to you. I ask you to continue to bless the world around us. Continue to bless the families. Continue to bless those that are listening. Whenever they are listening, continue to comfort them, embrace them, and cover them. Cover their families. Can Cover their households. Cover where they work. Cover wherever they go. They may be blessed and they may be safe. I ask you just to allow us to be self-sufficient through you. Allow us to be, be able to not be afraid of self-awareness to really learn who we are to let our pride down so we can learn how to become content because we know that's where we'll find strength as you just continue to keep us and guide us continue to give us the hearts to be active and allow us to be able to enjoy our weekends so i thank you and i praise you and give you all glory and praise in jesus christ holy name we pray amen once again thank you for listening i hope that you subscribe like comment follow all that I ask that you continue to keep in mind the Amazon uh, affiliate links and I will find a way to explain that better but basically you click on the link and you shop through the link and I get a percentage of whatever you spend but I will find a more effective way for the links to be available uh, besides just on my YouTube page and if you don't have anything planned please stop by one if not all of the events tomorrow I will be posting the flyers, and I hope that I will see you there. I hope that you find time to enjoy for your weekend, spend some time with your loved ones, and take a second to get closer to Christ in all that we do. And make sure you value your time because it's the one thing we can't get back. So I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day, and until next time.